Do I get any sour cream on you? <laughs> One of the staples for our family on a carnivore diet is tacos. We have taco bowls multiple times a week. We're constantly eating some type of beef fajitas or chicken fajitas. If I'm ever feeling in a funk and nothing sounds good, some type of tacos is my go-to. And today we're even gonna go fancier. It's Friday, we're gonna have a little Fiesta Friday, and we are gonna do some shredded beef tacos without the carbs. I got these beautiful chuck roasts that were on sale from the grocery store this week, and I'm actually gonna pull off those chuck eyes. And since it's so thick, I'm gonna slice them in half and freeze them and save them to eat like a steak in the future. Then I'm gonna take the rest of this and we're gonna braise it low and slow and turn it into shredded beef tacos for dinner tonight. I wanna take a second and let you know that this video is sponsored by Element, which is the electrolyte drink mix that I use every day. And while we're talking about tacos and Fiesta Friday, just know that they have a mango chili flavor that if you mixed it with some sparkling water, you could sprinkle some of this on the rim. It might give you like that margarita feeling you might be missing as you're enjoying your tacos. These, along with all of their other flavored versions, are sweetened with stevia and don't contain any artificial fillers or gluten or any junk. But if you're more like me and you're not wanting any sweeteners in your diet, then they have an unflavored version, which is literally just sodium, magnesium, and potassium. And it's the perfect balance that I need to help keep me hydrated. If you want to try their mango chili, the unflavored, and all of their flavors, you can get a free sample pack if you go to drinkelement.com slash Laura Spath. So thanks to Element for sponsoring this video. You could do this in your slow cooker, an instant pot, and smoker would add a lot of flavor. But today we're gonna to do my favorite version, which is to sear them in a cast iron and then we're gonna braise them in the oven. I love using chuck roast for this because it is so fatty and it's gonna add so much flavor and end up so tender. But you could use a variety of different roasts depending on what's on sale at the grocery store. If you don't know how to pick out a good chuck roast from the grocery store or remember how to remove this chuck eye, make sure you go check out my video on that. We're gonna save these that are gonna be nice and tender for steaks for the future. And then the tougher part will break down when we braise them today. These roasts come from the part of the cow that's right next to the ribeye, which is why chuck eye steaks are called poor man's ribeye. So I'm gonna pull off those tender chuck eyes, and since they're so thick, I'm gonna cut them in half, which is gonna give me four individual chuck eye steaks. I am going to cut this into chunks just so that it breaks down a little bit faster and I can get a good sear on all sides. And I'm gonna season it just with salt. Now, depending on your health and how well you tolerate seasonings, you can just use beef, salt, and then put some water in it for braising. Our family can tolerate some other seasonings, so I'm gonna add a few other things, but it's still gonna be delicious just with meat and salt. If you are gonna add other seasonings, I would not do it at the searing stage because otherwise those seasonings are gonna burn while you're trying to get a nice crust on the outside of your meat. I am just gonna use the salt that I already put on it and then we will put some tallow in the bottom just to help give it a good crust. Now, depending on how big your pan is and how much meat you have, you may have to sear this in a couple of batches, but that's okay. You're not actually cooking the meat. We're just trying to get a good crust on the outside and then it's gonna cook entirely all together in the oven. While those are searing, I'm going to vacuum seal and freeze those chuck eyes that I saved. Once the meat is seared on all sides, you can add it all back to the pot and pour in the water, which is gonna become your broth. I like to pour the water so it comes up about halfway up the meat. At this point, you then can add your seasonings. I'm gonna use some taco seasoning from Redmond Real Salt. It's gonna change it from having that pot roast flavor to making it the taco flavor that I'm looking for. And I actually have these dried mild chilies and I'm gonna put two or three of them in the pot just to add a lot of flavor. You could add onions and garlic and anything else like that that you tolerate. I'm gonna cook this at 300 degrees and I expect it's gonna take about three to three and a half hours, but we'll keep checking it to see how tender it is. If you're doing this in the crock pot or the Instapot or the smoker, the times are gonna vary. You're just looking for that shreddable texture at the end. Mm. 
This was in the oven at 300 for exactly three and a half hours and it is perfectly fork tender. Just keep an eye on it, check it every couple of hours and make sure that the liquid doesn't run out. At this point, we're just gonna shred up that beef and remove those chilies. If you had onions and garlic and chilies, you could put them all in the blender and make a thicker sauce, but I'm not looking for that many plants and I just wanted the flavor from cooking it. So once the meat's all shredded, I'll put it back in the pot and mix it up. This is so good. This came out perfect. Perfection. I can eat it just like this. It has the tiniest bit of seasoning and spice in it. It's so perfect. Um, I could eat a big bowl just like this, or I could put it in a bowl with some cheese and some sour cream on top and make it a some kind of like shredded beef taco bowl. But tonight we're gonna get a little fancy and we're gonna make some taco shells. I'm gonna make some crunchy taco shells and then some soft taco shells. And both of them are gonna involve mozzarella cheese. For the crunchy shells, we are gonna use a paper plate, some parchment paper, and the microwave. For each taco shell, I am gonna use, I don't even have, think I have a third of a cup because I don't use measuring cups much, but we're gonna use a heaping quarter cup and we are gonna pour this onto our parchment paper and just spread it out into a nice circle. This is gonna go in the microwave for one minute and 20 seconds. Trust me, it takes that long. Right when it comes out of the microwave, we are gonna try to fold it up. If it sits too long, it's gonna start hardening right away and you'll not be able to bend it soon. I'm gonna throw it in this little taco shell. If you don't have one of these, you can just drape it over a spoon or a spatula. Now that I made my hard shells, I actually am gonna do my favorites, which are the soft shells. And for that, we're gonna use the same mozzarella cheese and a skillet. I use the same quarter cup of cheese and sprinkle it onto a preheated medium pan. Once it starts to get crispy on the bottom, I just like to add my meat right on top. You could flip it over first, but that would make the whole thing crispier. I like it when it's gooey on the inside and a little bit crispy on the outside. Give it one final flip to crisp it up and it's finished. At this point, you then can add some sour cream or hot sauce. Maybe you're an avocado kind of person, anything that sounds good to you. Okay, there we have it. We have our soft, gooey, cheesy taco shells and our crispy, crunchy ones. I'm gonna put some sour cream on top of some and if you're feeling brave, I'm not very brave usually, but a couple drops of hot sauce is about all I can handle. Mm. These cheese shells, cheese shells, I can't say that. These cheese shells are so much cheaper than buying the ones from the store and I love the mozzarella. It's not as strong of a flavor as the Parmesan ones. If you use a more sharp cheese, like a sharp cheddar, it's just gonna separate and get oily and not stick together like this. Depending on what texture you're craving, I actually prefer these that are more cheesy, um, quesadilla style, soft tacos. Mm. We are clearly gonna enjoy a delicious dinner tonight and then there's lots of beef leftovers that I will crisp up in a skillet with some more sauce or put them in the air fryer and have for the next couple of days. I hope this video was helpful. Make sure you subscribe. Let me know in the comments below which other recipes you'd like me to try. And if you want more content from me, weekly live streams, or just wanna hang out with people who are going through the same things you are, you can come find us on Locals. So good. Bye guys.